motor cover. Probably have to figure out how to pull the fan off. I think maybe I just tore my rotator cuff. Try not to pass out. Thanks, motor. All right, well, that was a little more drama than I was looking for in an average work day. I think I figured out that it's not a rotator cuff thing. I'm actually getting a pinched nerve somewhere close to my shoulder socket. Yesterday was very painful. Today, mostly back to normal, except when I move in certain ways, I get a shooting pain in my shoulder. I gotta schedule a doctor's appointment, I guess. Hopefully that's fine, fingers crossed. Back to the motor. Yesterday, I had been like, ah, oh, forget it. I'm just gonna take it to the motor shop, but um, today, despite some numbness in my little fingers, I kind of want to open the motor and see what it looks like. Will that sound like a good idea? Let's find out. All right, I've got four screws to take out, which will uh, remove these connecting rods that hold the two end bells together. I'm gonna have to tap this bell off and I should probably open up this electrical box in here because I assume uh, there's some connections in here for the brushes and stuff that we don't want to tear out. There is a lot of uh, brush carbon in here. Uh, so I'm gonna have to vacuum this out before I go any further. Is this a little, just a two wire? No ground wire? I mean, I'm not even seeing a ground wire in here. Did I put a grounded plug on a non-grounded cable? Don't tell anybody, okay? Tippy tap. Okay. What do I see? I'm not even sure. There's definitely a lot of carbon in here and the, the carbon is from the brushes breaking down. Commutator's totally black, as you can see, uh, which it should not be. That should be nice and shiny. Why did it turn black is the real question I can't answer. I don't know what causes that other than arcing. What causes arcing? Yeah, don't know. I'm probably gonna have to chuck this on the lathe and try to clean it up with emery paper. If that is insufficient, I'm actually gonna have to turn this, which is fine, because I have a lathe. We'll pull the actual motory bit. <laughs> the shaft, I don't know. I can't remember what this is called. We're gonna pull this out. Do you think I can do it without jacking up my shoulder? I don't know. Yeah! I took the plate off. It should just pull straight up. <laughs> mm. It's hard to tell if it's just the magnetic field holding it in there or if uh, the bearing doesn't want to come out because there's another bearing on the other end of the shaft. To injure myself further or not, that is the question. Son of a... Can we try tipping it? Oh. Whoa, this piece of the case came off, which I wasn't anticipating. So before this goes too far, I'm just gonna make a witness mark here in case this orientation or anything is important. Holy cow, that's... <laughs> This is just being held by the magnetic field of the plane. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, now what? Okay, little fella. Oh, okay. We're out. It's definitely time for more vacuuming. It's 
so I'm sort of at the limit of my motor knowledge. This did get very hot, which is slightly troublesome uh, in that, I don't know, I don't see anything else that's obviously damaged. Like all of this wiring seems intact. And again, we'll chuck this up in the lathe and clean that up so it's nice and shiny. And that might work again. I don't know. There's probably some motor person watching this that is having an absolute fit right now. So I'll do a little bit more cleanup. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get this thing on the lathe today. That would be ideal, but uh, my shoulder definitely is burning a little, so it might be time to take a break. Close enough for what we're doing. All right, so this is after the second pass. Uh, there's still this little burnt patch I need to take down. Oh, that's actually pretty deep, strangely. Uh, all right, anyway, I got a little ways to go. All right, that is looking pretty good, if I don't say so myself. Now I just gotta get in here and uh, clean up all the little burrs uh, in between each one of these segments, because that will short out and uh, do bad things. So that's next. Alrighty then. Time to put this back together. Uh, I got the uh, armature tuned up on the lathe. I got some new brushes in. Okay, okay, okay. Old brush, new brush. So as you can see, this thing is completely toast. There's a little groove on this brush, which is the do not wear past this line groove. We went just past it. What was happening is the brush is so short, this spring was no longer able to push it against the armature, uh, and it was just kind of bouncing and floating, uh, and that's what burned the commutator and burned the brushes. So I had to machine off the commutator. Uh, I got some new brushes here. We're gonna install these. The curvature on the face of the brush isn't gonna match the curve on the armature exactly. Um, so you just have to run the motor a little bit in order to get the brush seated. So let's go ahead and put this back together. So here's our spanking shiny armature. Not bad for an amateur. Beauty. This is awkward. Oh, come on. That was easy. Little tappy tap. I think that's where the wave spring went. Do I need to do anything else? I think we're good. These fellas back in here. Going all the way around, trying to get the pressure even. And. Huh? What's left? Oh yeah, the thing that broke me. So there's a little metal tab here that digs into the grooves to hold the fan. I'm doing this at the end of the day on Friday, which seems like a good time to make a mistake. That seems good if this doesn't hit. I'm just trying to balance out the gap underneath with the gap between the fan shroud and there's going to be like an eighth of an inch, which isn't a lot. Does this have any features? No. So I'm actually lifting this up as I tighten just to give me a little extra clearance. Uh, I guess I can put the brushes in upside down. Brushes don't care. I have to say, these brushes kind of don't quite fit as well as the old ones. The ones I removed just would shoot out if you didn't hold on to it, which 
right now it's nice while I'm installing it, but it makes it a little harder to remove them when I need to do that. All right, I got my grease. Basically, anytime you're gonna reassemble stuff like this, uh, you should grease it if you want it to come apart later. Grease is your friend. Just wiping off the old grease. When I actually install the key, the grease is actually gonna help hold it in place and keep it from falling out. All right. Wipe up some of that excess. I'm also gonna need to grease this bit for when I put that big plate back on here. All right, this is the sporty bit, because if you remember, thousand pounds of magnets attached to here. Quick, a flashlight. Too much. All right, I'm just checking to see if I got the keyway lined up. I'm looking good. Thank you, magnets. Should I turn it on before I put everything else together? I probably should. I just need an outlet. Switches off, plugging it in. I'm just gonna bump the motor on. So let's start it. 50% speed, forward. Alive! I don't want to put my face too close to this, but I have to tell you, that is pretty satisfying. And that satisfying feeling is one reason I really like to fix things myself. It feels good when you can fix something on your own. All right, again, we use this machine a ton. Uh, so it has been out of service for several days uh, and we actually have a bunch of work backed up right now um, And the reason I'm trying to finish this off at whatever o'clock on Friday uh, is that when Gilbert gets in on Monday, I want him to be able to use this thing I got a little bit of break in to do I'm just gonna run it forwards and backwards for a few minutes and then try to get those brushes seated uh, without a load on the motor because the load increases the current and I, I don't want to be putting a bunch of power through the brushes until they're properly seated and have the correct amount of contact area. This is probably a long one, but thanks for sticking with me and uh, we'll talk to you next time.